Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? When I was trying to get this podcast off the ground, I had a lot of questions. How do I record an episode? How do I get my show into all the apps people like to listen? How do I make money from my podcast? Well, the answer to every one of these questions is really simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid to podcast right away. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now by reading this ad. When I started using anchor to do my podcast, it was so extremely easy that I haven't even bothered to look for another app to use. I love this app. It's the only one I deal with, the only one I even recommend, period. I recommend you get on there ASAP. If you want to start a podcast, this is definitely the place to go. It's easy. You can drive around and record. You can sit in your basement and record. You can uh, can do it anywhere. It's fantastic. So if you've always wanted to start a podcast, make money doing it, go to anchor.fm slash start, anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is Adam Rich. This is the Really Rich Podcast. I think you probably already knew that. But on this magical, motivational Monday, I just can't help but be reminded about what actually motivates me to get me motivated. Like, what actually gets me going? What? Why am I doing this at all? What, and the reason I'm even bringing this up is because I want you to think about that. What do you? Why are you doing it? Why are you doing whatever it is that you're doing? Do you have a goal? Do you have a plan? Is it something that you were talked into? Is this some, like was this the safe bet that you just you know happened to fall into and it just you're comfortable now? Is this the the thing that you've been passionate about your entire life that you've been wanting to do? Are you killing it? Like what is it that you're doing, and why are you doing it? And that's all I'm even wanting to bring up to you today. I just want you to start your week thinking about why on earth are you doing anything that you're doing? Like, where is your head at? And what are your goals? What are you setting forth for the future? Are you just going through the motions? Do you even have a plan at all? This is the thing is like so many times we find ourselves in a mode where we're comfortable with what's going on around us, with how our life is or how our job is or whatever. And we don't really, we get complacent. And that's when people start getting weak. And I don't mean weak physically. I just mean weak mentally, more or less. You get to a point where you don't push yourself. You don't strive to do better. You just kind of get through the moments. And the problem with doing that is that when you're comfortable and complacent, the days just tend to run together. And each day just seems to be an extension from the last. And listen, while sometimes that's a good thing, you don't want... 5, 10, 15, 20 years of your life to pass and you feel like you didn't really do anything. Like the one thing that I've noticed amongst everybody is eventually you will get to a point where your purpose in life is all you can really think is, is it means something to you. It matters to you. And I know so many people that friends of mine, I hope they're not listening to this, that they right now they're feeling very lost, very hopeless in life because they didn't push themselves to do something. They got a job at a decent company early in their career. It wasn't something that they loved, but they just dealt with it because it paid the bills. It allowed them for minor opportunities of growth. So it gives you this slow level of progression that feels good in the moment early on. It feels like you're moving up, but slowly, but you're thinking, hey, I'm young. I've been here a short amount of time. I I got plenty of time. This is going in the right direction. But then after time and time keeps passing and they see that nothing's really changed much in their life, they've just gotten a lot older, but yet their bills are still piling up. They're, they're, not, they're not moving on to bigger and better things. It's just more going through the motions. They start asking themselves, what am I doing? Why, what, why am I where I'm at? Do I even like my job? Do I like my life? And I don't want people to get to a point where you're lost or you're depressed before you really start taking advantage of 
your abilities, your talents, your skills, your desire, your passion about what it is you want to do with your life. See, and I always try to, I try to push people to do something that they're good at and something that they like because no matter what you do for a living, no matter what you do every day to pay your bills, eventually it has the ability, it, it tends to get familiar, I think would be the right word. It gets to a point where no matter what it is you're doing, you're just almost kind of going through the motions because of the fact that either A, it's not a challenge anymore, B, you fell out of love with it, C, you don't really have that drive to do better or maybe you have other priorities in your life. Maybe you got a family now and you don't really care as much about your job or your income as you used to. You just, you want to, you want to spend more time with people, friendships, families, things like that. There's a number of things that can happen in your life that really will make you change your perspective and how you look at things. Look, when I was in high school and a little after high school, all I cared about was partying. All I wanted to do was party. And I didn't care about having long-term relationships. I certainly wasn't planning on marriage or kids. I didn't care about any of that stuff. I just wanted a job that would pay my bills. And I just wanted to, you know, be able to go out and have a good time whenever I wanted to. And the reality is, you know, even that got old and that's fun. Like partying, you know, like usually nobody usually associates a party with having a bad time unless you plan on going to a party of somebody you don't like. So the thing is when you don't have a goal or an ambition or a drive or something that you're really looking forward to, it is hard to try to push yourself to be better all the time. And it's weird for me because I always try to help people find what it is that you're good at and what you really like and try to find a way to capitalize on that. But the wild part about it is in my own personal life, the things that I've always cared about, the things that I've always put my attention to, it's it's very difficult to find a way to make money doing that other than podcasting. And let's be honest, unless you're already famous, podcasting's hard to become, you know, how to it's hard to get big in, especially if you don't have a team, if it's just you. Like I'm by myself, it's just me. So when I make all my videos, when I make all my podcast stuff, all my social media content, it's just me doing it. And that's why I don't put out like 20 pieces of content every single day because I also have a family and a full-time job. So until I can get to a point where podcasting is my full-time job, it's going to be very difficult for me to make that, you know, that life a reality. But that's ultimately the goal because essentially the thing that I've always loved the most in life is people. It's understanding, I would say my field, the thing that I care about most, the thing that's always fascinated me the most is I have an obsession for wisdom. And it doesn't mean that I'm the wisest or anything like that. That's not what I'm trying to say. Every time I bring that up, I know how it sounds. Every time I try to say, oh yeah, I'm obsessed with wisdom, it makes it sound like, oh, you think you're smarter than everyone. And that's not at all what I'm saying. It's just, I've always cared to try to understand things. I've always tried, like, I think truth is so important. I think, that, and of, of course everyone says that, but then so many people I know will just believe whatever garbage gets spewed out by anybody. If somebody's on TV and they just say something, so many people will look at a person that's on TV and automatically assume that whatever information is coming out of that person's mouth, it has to be correct. Because why else would that person be on TV if they weren't competent, right? And the problem is, is how often do we see that now? There are so many people on TV that are not competent. They're on TV because they're a a lively personality or they're energetic or they know how to rile up a crowd or they're a great host. But nine times out of 10, these people are idiots. You know, I don't mean, I'm just kidding. They're not idiots. But the point that I'm getting at is that a lot of these times, these people are not professionals. They are wrong so much. And if you watch like mainstream media, CNN, MSNBC, if you watch these channels, they're, they're, the information they give you is always based on, they'll try to fit the truth around whatever narrative they're, they pick the narrative first and then they try to make it as true as they can. But the narrative is what's most important to them. They have a narrative in mind. They are desperate to force that propaganda nonsense onto you, regardless about how much of it is true or isn't. But they have a story that they are trying to tell you, that they are trying to basically sell to you. And when you click on these stories or you turn on the TV and watch them or when you go on YouTube or whatever and you try to watch these stories, it does not matter to them how true the stories are because there are no repercussions. They'll tell you anything. doesn't matter how wrong they are. You're going to tune back in again. 
And eventually you will get to a point where you stop watching it. Like I can't, I used to love watching ESPN. I hate ESPN now. I will not watch ESPN now unless it's like a special sporting event that is only on ESPN, then I'll watch that. But as far as the shows, and it's sad too because I like a lot of the anchors, like some of the TV anchors that are on, or the sports anchors I should say on ESPN. There's a lot of them that I like. The problem is I can't stand watching it anymore because all they do is what they want to make it political. It's always some kind of a, like, they always want to talk about the protesting and the kneeling and the, and Black Lives Matter and stuff like that. And it's like, dude, I'm not turning on ESPN to watch that stuff. I'll turn on CNN or Fox News or something if I want to hear about political stuff. But like, this is why the ratings are down on every sport because they're overly politicizing things and people aren't tuning in for that. That's not why we turn on sports. Like, if I wanted, if I turned on a superhero show, do you think I care about the politics at that moment? You think I, like, listen, I greatly care about what happened in Afghanistan and the people that have died, the people whose lives are now affected. I think that the president of our country is the biggest POS on the planet for how he handled this situation. That being said, I'm not turning on cartoons and sports shows and superhero show or movies or whatever. I'm not turning that on because I want to hear about what Biden did or what Trump did. I don't care at that point. When I want to hear about politics, I'll turn on politics. When I want to see superheroes, I'll turn on superheroes or, or sports or whatever. I don't turn on Avengers Endgame because I want to see them go back in time and reverse the election or anything like that. Like, I don't care what they do. I want to see super like I want to see things for what they are. I don't want politics and crap to be constantly infused in it. But I'm kind of going off in the weeds here. The whole point about it was the garbage narratives that they are forcing onto you. Do you turn on a football game or a baseball game or a basketball game or a soccer game because you want to hear about what political side is screwing you over? or how they handle Afghanistan or the border crisis or the Keystone Pipeline or any of this stuff. No, like you don't, that's not the point right now. But there's so many news outlets out there now that all they care about is we have a way of gaining clicks. We will make it as provocative, as dramatic as physically possible. We'll get your clicks and then who cares after that? Because even if they're wrong, you're going to tune in again because of the compelling news that you're, the entertainment that you're getting out of it. And then they're going to tell you more nonsense. The problem is, is when that's all you're watching, you're getting BS, you're getting information that's not true. And then you, you, nine times out of 10, you go and share that with other people. And then they're like, oh, really? And then they trust you because they're friends with you. And then they don't even go and watch the news. They're just relying on you to do it and you to give them all the right information. And then next thing you know, you got a telephone game of lies. And, and then we wonder why the country's screwed or why the world is in chaos right now. Like, it's crazy. Right now, there is a major hurricane hitting Louisiana, Hurricane a Ida, not Ada, Hurricane Ida, I think it is. And it's like destroying. I mean, it's, they said it's one of the strongest ones since 1850. Does anyone hear about it or talk about it? No, all we can talk about is Biden and the presidency and the Afghanistan and all that. Like, it's insane what's going on. The only people that really even know or talk about the hurricane are the people that are in the area. But, like, these types of things used to be news stories that everyone would cover objectively. And now it's like CNN doesn't care to cover that because it's not benefiting the Democratic side. Because CNN, that's how they do it. Fox News is more Republican conservative. CNN, MSNBC, CBS, a, uh, ABC, Fox, all of them. They are typically, not Fox, but they typically are all left. And then the Fox is mostly right. And I don't mean right and wrong. I mean right or left, you know, up, down, all that. So anyway, the point is these people are telling you whatever they think is going to get you to come back. They don't care if it's correct. And I think truth, wisdom, knowledge, it is the most powerful, phenomenal thing you can have is knowledge and wisdom. And I think in studying people, studying the world, studying science, studying reality and history, studying how everything is and why it plays out the way it does, why people are the way they are, how their parenting has affected them, how their childhood has affected them, how their jobs, their lives, their views, how all of it works, right? I care greatly about all of that, but there's not a lot of money in that. So it's very difficult to try to make a career out of that. But it's okay because it fascinates me and I love it. And that's why I have another job. That's why I have a full-time job. But when this becomes a full-time deal, I will be able to put more value into it. I'll be able to put better videos, better production into it. 
be able to do more live shows where I can interact with some of the fans and stuff. And I cannot wait for all that. The problem is I need to get myself to that position first. I'm not quite there yet. So you guys bear with me. I love each and every one of you that are actually sticking by me and listening, even though it's not the greatest in production value. I get it. I'm sure you probably heard my turn signal in there a couple of times today. Maybe the change jingling around in the door while I'm driving. But I assure you the eyes have, were on the road the entire time. So if you were wondering how dangerous it is out there, guys, I am 100% focused on the... Oh, my God. No, I'm just kidding. I'm actually sitting in my driveway right now. But <laughs> anyway, I love you guys, and I thank you so much for everything that you're doing. I thank you for everything that you are to this channel, to supporting me. I love each and every one of you guys, and I can't say it enough. I mean it from the bottom of my heart, and I thank you so much. If you want to get a hold of me on any social media, TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, whatever, you can find me on pretty much anything with It's Adam Rich. And don't don't be afraid. There's going to be some different, uh, you know, each... Uh, what is it? Each social media, basically, I treat a little differently. Like TikTok, when you see me on It's Adam Rich, I do a lot of Christian talk, a lot of godly talk. I also have a crypto channel. It's Crypto Rich. I talk about crypto on there. I also, um, on Twitter, I talk about all kinds of stuff, whether it's politics, crypto. I talk about all kinds of stuff on there. It, just wherever you want to find me, please do it. Please just DM me get some kind of contact and I will, I, I love talking to the people. So anyway, I'll let you guys go on this. I love you guys. Thank you so much for all you do. And I will talk to you again soon. Peace. I'm out of here. Oh, and let's keep that motivation Monday guys, whatever it is that you're doing, figure out why you're motivated, why you're doing what you're doing and keep it going. Do not stop. Get good at everything you do and conquer everything. I love you guys. Peace. I'm out.